Recording is on. There we go. This is the Fellowship of the Link call for Wednesday, December 20, 2023. We're getting very close to the end of the year. Very close. Go ahead with your uh, proposition. Yeah. Plan. No, good time for planning. And like, uh, yes, I guess for Cecil Reels as well, as we were discussing uh, before the recording started. So we have some notes um, for anybody lo uh, looking at this in, in posterity. Um, uh, so I will, I think, quickly present them. If I can find the right tab, yes. So this tab is a fellowship link in uh, the Agora, and the notes are in the Agora proper. You can also go to docanagora.org slash fellowship of the link. But uh, yes, um, in any case. And uh, yes, we discussed Cecil Reels and had an interesting example and uh, the potential of like uh, a storyboard generator, maybe. Yeah. Uh, as an intermediate step. Uh, yeah, on topics, uh, I wanted to maybe actually discuss, like, I'll show you a, a, a quick demo. Please. Of something I've been working on. That sounds uh, awesome. As, as part of the similar adventure, uh, which uh, is something I've been doing uh, after work and weekends and so on, um, this, this uh, well, this month, as you could expect. Uh, I think I mentioned it like the previous time I was, uh, you know, last time I had to skip it, the previous one uh, is the idea is just like a vent for cold, a vent of cold, but like a chiller. Mm -hmm. So essentially you just call something uh, like every day if you can. Cool. Sounds yeah. great. I love, I love challenges like that. Yeah. And any other topics or like things for the agenda? Um, Michael, any topics that are come to your mind that are fellowship of the linky? Uh, you're muted, I think. Yeah. Um, I. Uh, I mean, I. I no, nothing specific. Um, I've, I've got uh, some. Some linky linky thoughts about objects that I'm working on, um, and, you know, archiving personal archiving, um, and maybe we can get to that. Cool. Um, cool. I'm interested in the topic. I'll, I'll call it uh, thinking like a neo book. So inspiring. Yes. She's off the charts. Thinking like a neo book. Michael, we're, 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 we're hearing the video. Yeah. Oh, I think it was coming from you, Jerry. I think no, we no, no. It was, it was me. It was, it was me. I don't, know, I don't know how it got un, unmuted. I had been watching uh, um, April's. Uh, oh, cool. The, this is a real. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> a lot of cuts. A lot of cuts. It's it's very it, like they're really good editors, mm -hmm. and um, the the pacing like a minute and fifteen seconds in, you have to assume that most people are not going to go any further. So the whole package of of why you're trying to sell this speaker has to show up in that first minute and a quarter, or minute. Uh, and then after that, there's like a shift of tone, and then there's a reason to kind of stay in because, oh, oh, I want to know about this too. And it's very weird how much attention you have to manage for five and a half minutes of video. Yeah. And so there's, as I was uh, telling Valencian, I think before you got on, there's also a two minute version, uh, which yeah. cut, cuts out a bunch of the story, but it's, it's like for the people who don't want that much, there's also a version with subtitles um, because some people will need subtitles, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Um, so you want to do your demo, Flancian? Uh Sure. I mean, uh, I'm doing the uh, demo. Yes, uh, I can do it in the beginning, and then actually it ties uh, into the neo book uh, aspect, maybe. Fabulous. So, yeah. So I just wanted to like uh, show. Let me share this tab. Actually, it's neo book. I don't know if you can see this. Awesome. Yes. We yeah. we're, well, we're seeing your agora. Yes, and Good. this is a neo book. This is the node on neo book. Oh, cool! Uh, on how it looks nowadays. Yep. This is the, the beta alpha, actually, uh, of the uh, Agora server. This is not uh, yet deployed to the Agora of the link, but uh, it will be soon. Uh, I've been working on this as part of the similar adventure. Some UX simplification, hopefully, to make, try to make it a bit clear, uh, and also some features. I wanted to sh show you a few. Uh, so, well, in particular, when it comes to the link to the chat for the link oh, to yeah, the particular spot in so your This is a, a Navarral door uh, slash neo book. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in general, the node for visiting node um, whatever on Anagora, 
you go to another.org slash whatever, and you can yeah. add spaces, pluses, dashes. It will try to parse what you give it. Cool. Yeah. So here's an example of NeoBook. And so I go just quickly over this. Uh, so up uh, on the top, uh, you can actually uh, search on on different services. So in case you don't find uh, what you were looking for in the Agora, or if you want to move on after that to do further research, of course, you know, Google, which I use and like, even if, you know, <laughs> Hyatt, as you know, as we may have nowadays, uh, being others. Marginalia is a nice search engine for the indie web uh, and blogs and so on in, in general. Reddit, we also read it, I think. And then some, you know, X even to uh, X for like, uh, you know, people who are like uh, still Twitter, uh, which makes sense. And to find it from Aston. So essentially, this is very, very simple stuff. It cool. just forwards to the right search. Yeah. Then the Wikipedia article that uh, we have, that Wikipedia returned for this query, Neobook. In this case, it's funny because it's list of films considered the worst. How did that happen? I have no idea. Uh, usually, yeah, it's, it is relevant. Actually, if it's, it's very relevant because it has the same title as what you search, it will just automatically uh, be embedded. There so might be a movie just... with the word neobooks in it. Yeah, it may be. Sometimes it's just like the mystery of Wikipedia search. But I have mm. to say that when it's not relevant, it's funny. Yeah. Which I like. That's good. That's cool. Like in this case, maybe. Then a new feature, which is generative AI. So the I will actually uh, forward the query with a prompt to a generative AI service. In this case, I'm using Mistral. I don't know if you know Mistral. Open source, uh, open weights, very interesting stuff coming from France. Uh, supposedly, a, a quite re recently uh, efficient model uh, uh, called Mistral. It has performance around GPT 3.5. Right. And it's open source open weights. So I really like it. Yeah. So what this will do is it will generate text and links. So for example, these links, interactive ebooks, digital publishing, multimedia content, and interactive elements. Uh, these are things uh, Mistral, as uh, in this Agora assistant role, thought could be interesting links related to Neobook. Mm -hmm. So you can just click through, and uh, it will, uh, uh, of course, go to the Agora location. Like the so, so, so wait, on. are these things you already had in the Agora, or are these new Agora pages that Mistral just created for you? Uh, these are just new Agora pages that it dreamt up. It doesn't know it, 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 they are actually there. What usually ends up happening in my, in my testing so far is that a lot of these make a lot of sense. So uh, even when there's no Agora content, there's a Wikipedia page that is very uh, so, so just so I understand a little better, um, Interactive eBooks is an internal link for the Agora. Did it know yes. enough to put double brackets around that? Or did you put that in afterward? Did it, did it no, create, yeah, did it, I, it did. So the prompt says, I can show the prompt if you want. Oh, cool. So the prompt says, hey, put double brackets around the thing and then go create the page or the, exactly, yeah. the node? No, it doesn't create the page. It just it just creates a link. OK. And then it's up for us humans in further, for example, if you visit. Yeah. So one thing that could happen, for example, is. Wow, uh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I found it uh, uh, this a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. Uh, I show you. I, I can show the prompt in a bit. Uh, I mean, I think uh, uh, the prompt essentially says you're a friendly assistant in a knowledge base called the Agora, uh, uh, and uh, the user is asking about an entity, which can be a thing, a concept. And um, when responding, please put a few entities that are interesting in those query brackets, mm -hmm. a weekly link, and then it just works because the Agora parses that as a, essentially. A, uh, as uh, as links, mm -hmm. so this will be interactive ebooks. The Wikipedia article is just ebook here. Not a bad time to read ebook. Usually, I end up reading Wikipedia a lot more, which I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, if you want to uh, to know what it can dream up on interactive ebooks, uh, you wait a few seconds. It should be less than ten, and voila. You have like a generated node. Hot damn. Now, uh, now you're storing this in the Agora. So whatever it, gener it auto generates right now is now permanently part of the Agora. Right. So good, uh, uh, good, uh, good comment. Not right now because it's a prototype, but that is, of course, the, the, the goal, um, the idea. So okay. for now, it says to save a generation, please copy and paste into this document store. Ah. So this I've been doing. So you, I mean, this is the manual. This is the proof of work where yep. I, some human copied and pasted. This is not. 
The idea is to have a pin button or a save to our button. Yeah. So I would love for people to still select what they really like. Yeah. Oh, so uh, think about yeah. a very brief aside, I've turned on uh, Google Workplace uh, Labs. Uh, yeah. And so when I open a spreadsheet, I get this little thing. Hey, can I help you build the spreadsheet? Which is pretty yeah. fantastic. It's pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's very really good. And it, uh, I, I mean, Michael, yeah. Michael, I don't know if you've seen this. Have you seen it? <coughs> uh, you're muted. I'm so, not sure if I have. Okay, so th there's a whole new window that shows up on the right-hand side, and it says, um, I need a marketing database uh, for a publication or something like that. And then it will generate um, columns, name them, put in fake data to show you what it was like, if there might be pick lists in there. And then at the bottom it says, do you want to dis discard this or accept it? And if you accept it, that's the start of your spreadsheet. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. I know the people working on it. Um, we are honestly all quite excited about it because um, putting my hat on, like uh, yeah, the disclaimer, yeah. uh, Google is my employer. I think it's pretty cool and Google is in a position to focus on integration. Yes. And it responds to integration, useful integration. Uh, and yeah, uh, I think the flows for like trying out things and then this idea of like, okay, bring it, bring it in. Like a slides integration is very, this is where I shouldn't, I don't know how much of this has launched, but like, it's very nice. I, it's cool. So keep going. Sorry. I, I just wanted to yeah. say that I totally understand yeah. that you would, want yeah. to, you would want to have a little option to discard or approve. Exactly. So here I just copy and pasted. The nice thing is that you can choose whatever you want. The, the, the links get maintained because again, they're wiki links, yep. so square brackets. Yep. So copy and paste it works. Next time you, uh, within 30 seconds, this will be in the hour. Cool. So going down, uh, going back to NeoBook. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for now, I have to say, yes, the the actual uh, generations are cached. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you refresh, it will, uh, you will get the same one. And that could be also another mechanism in which you can uh, yep. uh, save generations. Hey, hey Adam. Hey, Adam. Um, Lonson is doing a demo of uh, sort of a NeoBooks and generative AI using mixed trial, uh, trial inside of his Agra. Yeah. Okay. It's really cool. Yeah. You know Mixtral, the mixture of experts? Uh, uh, no. Yeah. So Mixtral AI, a surely French company uh, doing open source, open weights AI. Uh, and brought up Mixtral, which is a mixture of experts uh, approach, an ensemble approach where like uh, the cost of inference is, is uh, significantly lower than the performance it yields, which is around 3.5, uh, GPT 3.5. I mean. And yeah, I, I, I prototyped some uh, AI integration in the Agora. Uh, so for example, this is a uh, content generated for NeoBook. Um, and you know, this, the prompt, the system prompt says, uh, you're as an assistant in a, in a knowledge graph called Agora, uh, please uh, link interesting uh, entities. And I found that, you know, it's quite fun how it generates links, essentially. <laughs> so very much to the topic and to the, you know, uh, the topic of the meeting. Super cool. Um, yeah. So, uh, yes, um, another, uh, so for example, I go into the link. Uh, this is an example of what you get just out of the system problem. It's quite short. So, you know, it says like it doesn't know for the link. Currently, it isn't getting extra information from the Agora. Oh, man, our so, marketing is failing. But that's the thing. If, I, if we delay the generation until the, the we actually have gotten, you know, all the content that is in the Agora, which is the next step, it could actually read this and summarize. As a, as a, as a corpus. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so... But it's still, you know, like I liked how I wanted to show how it was. It managed to, like, you know, in the context of the hour and so on. It says I'm here to facilitate the operation of the hour and provide insights. Um, it sort of like guessed what it is, and it sort of like got it right. Wow! It refers to a group of individuals or entities who are closely connected uh, through shared interest, collaboration, and cooperation within the, the knowledge graph. Uh, and all of these, of course, for example, like knowledge graphs. Um, so another, really another cool. of course, you get knowledge graph immediately because it matches well. And then uh, you just can, again, generate content and optionally save it. You know, seven to eight seconds, but, you know, open source and good price. Yep. So um, and it just explains. And in, in the Agora, it sort of like assumes that uh, the Agora is, is uh, about, uh, about like uh, classic uh, attempts, entities, 
uh, also, um, you know, I guess, I guess. In any case, uh, going back to new books and finishing the demo, uh, like I said, yes, this is generated um, uh, in, the, in the current um, layout. So you get like, a, I mean, this could be ranked, but right now it's always like search first, Wikipedia, GenAI, STOAS, which are shows like um, essentially um, uh, like, well, hello again, uh, <laughs> like a document right now. Uh, this is a good time to, to mention that I found Framatalk, which is also French, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I swear this, the French uh, government is not paying me, <laughs> but like, it's also great. And I will actually suggest that we move the calls to this because uh, it is Jitsi, but it's run completely open. So no logins and like not of all these other things we are we have been uh, suffering. Uh, no kidding. From. Yeah, I really recommend it. So just uh, a suggestion, maybe we can bold me. Cool. Uh, and then in NeoBook, here's what I, I guess more specific about NeoBooks. This is essentially, um, there's no actual node in the other about NeoBook in the sense that I didn't, nobody had started a node called NeoBooks, uh, NeoBook MD. In this hour, I think uh, there may be one in the link in the other link, but in the other plan, but still, we have all this concept because we have been writing in the link in the notes. And every time we mention NeoBook, uh, we are essentially writing at a distance. So, this is uh, essentially how, without even creating the NeoBook page, you got uh, you, you can see all the all the content uh, about just, NeoBook just because it's a recurring topic that's being parsed out. Exactly. Yeah. I cool. mean, essentially, because it has been linked. Yeah. If you don't link it, it will only show in text search. But if you link it, it will actually show up at a, at a distance. Hmm. And uh, yes, and then uh, I made some changes in uh, how um, fuzzy we get on which other content we surface. And I like it because, you know, like uh, it's a bit um, promiscuous, which sounds good to me, actually. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, for example, like co write, uh, co write a new book or three, I relate is already here. And you know, in this recursive approach, you can see all these and do the same thing, like you know, for example, like Gen AI for co write a new book. I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to what it comes up. Co write a new book involves collaboratively creating an interactive and multimedia rich digital book using a, the new authoring tool. That seems like a fair guess. <laughs> um, and new book authoring tool. It, it proposes that seems like an interesting note to write, maybe. Hmm. So I, I guess I already see how just distribution of links and generation, even at this basic state, I found I have had this only for one day essentially, and I already uh, missed it, miss it when I don't have it. That's that's super interesting. It's it's uh, interesting too that. So this is this is generated AI text. That is making yeah. up what it thinks a neo book might be, but it's really easy to start mixing that up with text that we wrote about trying to describe a neo book, and it's it's like hard exactly. to label what is what is an inference by the engine that might be hallucinating, and what is something that some author intentionally wants to write where it's been very carefully crafted <clears throat> to to mean what it says, right? And and the boundary yeah. between those two things is is blurring quickly. Exactly, and and this is where I think having one interface. Uh, where you you can both generate and as a, and as a community select cherry pick and edit right uh, is where and maybe have even some traceability right if, if if people choose to do so it has potential and it probably will be beneficial this right. is where I even though right now it, it's clunky to say copy and paste into the, into the document I've sort of been doing it because first it's very easy and it, it, it maintains all the links. But uh, as you do okay. that, I would add a header or a footer that says, yeah. you know, by the way, this is auto-generated text. This page is auto-generated yes. text. Yeah, I think um, it would be great if, uh, you know what I'm going to do, I think? Add a copy button before I add the save button. Yep. And have it have that, that header. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. the easiest and actually, yeah. Auto insert, auto insert the header so nobody forgets, so it's consistent. Sounds right. great. Exactly. And, you know, uh, to which extent, I mean, this could also go into, this already goes, by the way, uh, if you write to uh, Astoa, it actually automatically gets to a Git repository. So then you could just like take the Git file and edit it as cool, cool, cool. If you want. Uh, and that's, that's the demo. <laughs> that is awesome. 
Congratulations, really, really cool. No, thank you. I mean, it's been fun. It's just fun stuff. Uh, and of course, I would love to add uh, Bard and uh, ChatGPT. Uh, right now, this is all running uh, on my API key. And I want to see, I mean, how long it lasts. It's actually not very expensive, Mistral. And the other is not super popular, as you know, uh, yeah. yet. Uh, yeah. So, so then uh, I will just uh, bankroll the operation. Sweet. Sugar daddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then but, uh, the idea is will be uh, to have client side generations for this kind of tool. So when you go to settings and say, like, insert your, the API keys for the services you have, and then you get the UI for those services. And, and that way it's also completely like you say, like client side and you can choose precisely how to share. It. Right, cool. Aram, Michael, questions, comments, answers, suggestions? Jokes, recipes, wishes? I think it's cool. I, I have like uh, less interest in AI generated text in these spaces, I think, than most people who are participating here do. Uh, but I like how you used it. And as long as there's a warning on it that says, you know, this is AI generated text yeah. really clearly, Absolutely. I don't think it's a problem. No, I, I thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, I think. Um, it makes sense to, uh, I mean, and the idea of the hour is, is, is human first, I mean, you know, of course. Mm -hmm. It's like, a, a, you know, it's a kind of a place where I, I hope the idea is like, maybe there's still a mention of users, actually users on the top. And I want to change it by with, uh, replace it by people, right? This idea of like, you know, the, the, the use of users as a, so yeah, I, I really wanted to be like very people first. Um, I. I I think as an assistant, though, I really like like the idea of like the well the cyborg approach, where you are like just being clear about what is AI, what is human, and I'm just focusing on like you know improving how we collaborate essentially. But uh, yeah, very fair. So maybe I won't add the autosave. Uh, it's better if the humans always take the action and like take ownership maybe of the fragments. Yeah, I think that would be better if people like for, were forced to review it to some extent, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, there's just like a lot of potential there for errors to occur. Yeah, completely. Uh, yeah, and once you start, it's like what we're seeing errors as well. Once you start, start like uh, having generated content in the corpus. Uh, and but this is where like uh, the idea. I mean, this is not this optional behind every hour in the sense that it's on the pragmatic level. But you know, uh, each hour defines a corpus, just because it's a collection of repositories by definition. No, so and mm -hmm. the idea has been to like you know um, you know explore the potential of that, how, uh, how communities can define cor uh, corpora and so on. But uh, we're learning well, the well, secrets of this. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, one question on the AI generated um, copy and the auto save is what, one thing that always slightly annoys me with um, with AI generated con um, content that I'm dealing with. You know, if I prompt ChatGPT to create something, um, I've annoying is too strong a word. Um, I'm, I'm thinking in a situation like yours, this this has been generated and you have the option to save it or not. Um, is it editable while you're looking at it or does it need to be taken out and pasted into some, some other context to be edited and then brought back in? Because I've, I've often been struck that, you know, this is a good start. I really want to just edit this on the fly right away. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, here I know that at least some of the generators I've seen in the actual UI have this uh, a notion of mark text and say like replace it or like you know incorporate the edit operations into the generation generation flow or user journey. Yeah. I mean, here I mean of course here is uh, for now it's very very um, uh, simple. So you know by definition you have to copy and paste it. I think ideally yes you could have like uh, when you save it will open it in edit mode immediately. So then you can start uh, changing it. Um, and you know, because it's all it get back in the end, we should have traceability and then, uh, you know, 
then we end up with like the ship of tissues eventually where you are like you started with something generated and you ate it enough no? uh, and, and in the end i think these conversations lead into the aura concept you know like as, as per benjamin uh, as in you know yeah it's, it's what we choose to see you know whether it's mostly human or mostly you know uh, almost the eye. But yes, uh, um, I will try to experiment with like the editing aspects and like just read it. Cool. Well, what's on your wish list besides that? Uh, Flancia, what's on your wish list? Where do you want to? Oh, my wish list. Yeah, oh. Where do you want to? Where do you want to steer this? Um, so you mean, uh, sorry, today's conversation or the or the this experiment? The experiment. Oh yeah. yeah. So, I mean. Uh, well, going back to the neo book aspect, uh, I mean, so on the AI direction, is like the idea is to have like a, the idea, implement the idea of a router of, of prompts. Right. From router. So this idea that, you know, add value in having a, a, a one place, uh, decentralized, not centralized, but change, where like communities can say, we, we can easily try different providers and pick the best and so on, no? um, which is not something uh, usually corporations do uh, very willingly. Uh, to be on, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the comments. Um, and on the direction of like uh, UX, so uh, yeah, going back to NeoBook, um, I was thinking of um, like uh, just taking, because I think um, we discussed previously on the issue of transclusion, how to transclude and then generate, right, um, into, um, a, 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 say, a, a PDF or like a document. So what I was thinking is like, you know, with pushes, uh, we are quite close in the sense that, you know, I, I could, one incremental uh, step would be to add like a, you know, export to PDF uh, um, uh, option in a, in, a, in a node or any, any section here. And once you have that, uh, you know, essentially rendering all the pushes one after the other will essentially yield transclusion so essentially, you could uh, to, to build a new book. You can write anywhere in a in a in a new repository, and then you essentially have to say where you want to send it to. So, for example, you write a chapter, and you think, well, this could be published in these and these and these new books if they existed. So then, instead of having to go to each new book and create it and, or like you know add another link to the place you were coming from, right. you only need to do one action, which is to say push, push, push. Hmm. So it sort of like flips it on its head. So you're 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 basically publishing into a, a, a variety of books, a co some, exactly. some content that would be relevant, which is right. Intriguing. I mean, it, it then needs to be integrated into the books, unless it's just exactly. a, unless it's just a list item. Right. If it's a list item, this will uh, work very well for pattern languages. Yeah. So, so this is why I guess my default proposal would be like the, the one of the new books we work on, or maybe the first one we, we work on, I don't know, is a pattern language. For example, a pattern language, right? Because, cool. you know, it's same shape as a list of patterns. And, uh, and you know, the, the, of course, like the traditional pattern languages are still order, and some of them like a pattern language. They go from um, you know large from very small. large scale to very bottom, right? Exactly. To very, very, very small. Yep. And then in that set, but but that's an operation that can apply, apply to the list. So you know, yep. like, uh, but but I know a lot of pattern languages are more are less. They don't have a notion of size. So then, uh, essentially, that would be you know if in Relate or uh, you know in whichever repositories we're using, we uh, in the out of the link, for example, we say you know. We write things, and then we are like, "This is in this new in this new book." Just by saying, for example, like book title, like here, right? You say book title between, so that's a uh, between uh, you link it, and then essentially what you write there it will just like be automatically transcribed at a distance. And you know, I can work on the skinning aspects of how it renders and so on, but I think we could get to a generator that is even tool agnostic. Uh, you know, the idea without a lot of work. Um, yeah, and, and in my um, experience, I use pushes like this. Well, now it's essentially I'm making it like so uh, everything pushes. If you linked it, you see it's sort of like a um, like a, a, a very strong reference. 
Uh, but you know that can be tuned essentially. Uh, yeah, so that's just the idea. I guess on the new book selection. Cool. <laughs> Love it. Uh, any questions, thoughts? Anyone else? Okay. Let me know if you want any features, essentially. Uh, or maybe we can discuss the, uh, well, I'm happy to discuss the new book, um, like uh, next steps, or if we want to discuss that, but I don't know. I'm happy to. Um, Michael, did you want to go to your topic? Sure. Um, so I'm I'm thinking a lot lately about, and this is something I've, I've brought up in. in and your, your tone, your gain is really low somehow. You're uh, yeah. not very loud. Uh, See if I can do anything. Yeah. I mean, we can hear you. It's just that we're all leaning in a little bit. All right. Um, don't know if I have capacity to be better. I'll just try and talk louder. Cool. Um, I'm working on a project about um, kind of databasing. At, at, at its broadest, it involves helping people to inventory and deal with the artifacts in their lives, um, the, the physical objects um, that they've got. And as Jerry, as you know, it grows out of my archival propensities. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And um, the need that I've seen is um, you have people, particularly, uh, you know, aging baby boomers um, and, and older, who have a lot of stuff, have a lot of stories, um, have sometimes, you know, attachments to things. Sometimes, you know, you, you have the dynamic between uh, a parent and child where, you know, the, the child thinks the parent is a hoarder or some such thing. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just have people who, like, are fascinated by stuff and books and, you know, um, things and, and have accumulated a lot of them. Um, and the thing I think the archivally minded all wish for is that, oh, I wish I had a complete inventory of everything and it was easy to find and I could also know the value of the stuff that I have and be able to part with it um, without the pressure of like, oh, I'm putting it on sale right now on eBay and I have to take the highest good that somebody's got as opposed to it's sitting there in, in my inventory and it's either available for sale or it's not available for sale. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if somebody makes me an offer on it in 10 months, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not urgently trying to sell it. Um, and it also uh, speaks to the idea of people who are downsizing and, you know, might want to have all their stuff inventory taken away, you know, put the warehouse sold off. Now, the, the more interesting wrinkle about it is the knowledge that is attached to these things and how people feel about what they know about the objects they've accumulated. Um, whether they, um, oh, actually, yeah, I just seen that you have that. Michael, I went and I just went and just, you know, typed in make me an offer.com, and it's very funny because it looks like it's a, it's a domain that somebody's bought, but you could buy it from them. <laughs> That's funny. And, and it would be a really interesting service to have, and then you could have a different aspect to it, a different facet to it, which is the home inventory thing. And I've got a bunch of things I'd love to pass to you for, about that. But 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 the nexus of these things is really interesting. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. There used to be a function on. Um, I, I think they got rid of it as they got further into bed with the real estate industry. But there used to be um, an aspect on Zillow where you could say, "I'm not moving. My house isn't for sale. But if you made me this offer, I would." I would move. Right. And so, you know, it was an outlandish price, but um, 
but you know, some people were more serious about it than others. But it's a, it's a great it's a great dynamic to create. I think that's a great idea for a site, actually. Like, for example, like uh, you know, <laughs> the uh, what uh, people could like actually uh, ask for a lot of money uh, for the personal information, which people you know, like corporations are like amassing already, mm -hmm. and they could say, actually, this is worth like ten million for me. Right. 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 Or you know, or let Elon Musk uh, have dinner with you, <laughs> like ten million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. This, this uh, is how demand curves are built. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, well, then, a price is out there. Right. It's 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 true. It's like you know, um, it's like that famous. Uh, is it is it George Bernard Shaw? Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a George Bernard Shaw line. So, something like that. It's like, um, Madam, would you sleep with me for one million pounds? Oh yeah. And we're bartering. Well, I suppose I would. How about you know ten pounds? What do you take me for? Well, we've already established that we're just haggling about the price. Yeah, yeah. I like it, although I think we need a new phrasing because it feels a bit misogynist now. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But you know, but I mean, to to triangulate prices on on just about anything, um, to have, yeah, to have that that the, the the passive marketplace is what I think is the key key thing I'm trying to create here, yeah. um, and and also the the aspect that is not a marketplace. Um, but a place of interest that you go not shopping, but just because you're interested in a different, you know, in a particular area of stuff. And so it like, it kind of flips the notion of hoarding on its head where, you know, people can say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm creating something valuable. Um, and and the the fact that I've collected this thing and can tell you something about it and can you know have its digital um, twin be available to you is is me doing something of value and maybe that's enough for me and maybe I can part with the physical object now that I've created this digital doppelganger. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of potential for people who are getting rid of stuff to to do it with without that exasperation of oh but what if it's valuable or oh that you know this you know i have the sentimental attachment to this or, oh i know the story and the story will be gone um anyway mm -hmm. so uh i'm like you know working on on uh business plans around this and and uh you could get vc funding for this that i think could totally be doable yeah I mean, I, I I have a I have an allergic reaction to VC funding, but uh, good, I, good. That's a very good allergic reaction. Yeah, self-preserving uh, allergic but, reaction. But I mean, my allergic reaction to VC funding is mostly around where you know I've been dealing with it with relation to uh, media and attention mongering, um, mm -hmm. where I think it's a really it's a really awful force that has created bad things for us in terms of information flow um but with goods maybe not you know maybe not as bad um, did i hear ducks is that um, um yeah anyway I, I i guess you know i i i'm interested to throw it out here just for um people's reactions to it and relationships to things and relationships to their parents' things. Um, and, and particularly for taking relationships to objects out of the world of, oh, this is something that you deal with in a crisis at the end of life, like an estate sale, to um, this is something that as a healthy process of leaving my own legacy and and you know benefiting the world with my physical and uh intellectual collection um i engage in throughout my life 
um, and you know, put my curation out there. Interesting. So a couple, a couple different things. Uh, one is like the bookcase right behind you, uh, Michael. Yeah. I've long wanted, and a couple of years ago I was trying to play with. It, you should be able to take a picture of this uh, of the spines of a series of books. Yes, and exactly. have them all go straight into Delicious Monster or Library Thing or whatever. I want to like, say, like, say the exactly the same thing. That, we that, are video, ideally. That should be a done thing. Don't care if it's stills or a video, but even just panning across would be great. Yeah. Boom. TikTok to to bookshelves. And then second, like now with barcodes between barcodes and object IDs and all that kind of stuff, like you could really absorb a lot of things very quickly, and it would be kind of fun to do. Um, yeah, there there is. Um, I mean, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the um, collectors with a Z has an app that I've used for some of my books. I definitely use it for my comics, where um, with the books it just scans the barcode, or you can type it the I. And, yep. and it gives you, it populates the thing. Awesome. Um, then um, in 2018, I had an idea that I put the URL for in the chat, the joy line. Um, and I'll, I'll give you the TLDR on the idea because I was working with an Australian insurance company and I realized that insurance operates below the joy line, which means there's some line of happiness or satisfaction that you're at right now. And for insurance, you're paying a company money you don't want to pay out for an incident to avoid an incident that you hope never happens. And if that incident happens, their job is to bring you back up to that previous line of satisfaction. And that's all. And you know that there's probably fine print somewhere that says they're going to find a reason not to make you that happy. But their job is just to bring you back up to that joy line. And the idea was mm -hmm. um, April and I were both advisors to a little company called Trove that was about micro insuring things like your downhill mountain bike or your skis or whatever else, and then paying insurance only when you were using these things. That was their, that was their play. It ended up, the company ended up pivoting and then getting get, sort of bought. Um, but that company had a reason to have an inventory of some of your items. And so I started thinking, what would it be like if they knew a lot of your things? And one of my propositions to them was, Hey, um, a message could come from Trove that says, uh, hey, I notice we know because you've let us know, but we know that you haven't ridden your motor downhill bike in two years. We've discovered that there's a couple downhill bike clubs you could join that are near you. Would you like an intro or just a link? Um, would you like to put your bike into the sharing economy? We've already pre-populated a post and we can put it directly into one of the sharing economy sites. Would you mm -hmm. like to sell it? We've pre-populated a post. You could put it on Craigslist or somewhere else. Uh, or here's a couple stores that take trade-ins that are near you. Uh, it's, and here's roughly what, what your bike is probably worth right now. And we know that if you sold this, we'd be, you'd be paying us less insurance, but we think that you having less stuff is better for you and your, and your life. Anyway, that, that was a whole narrative yeah, yeah. That, that I came up with around, around this joy line idea. But, but for me, reframing insurance as op, being able to operate above the joy line was really an interesting thought experiment. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. So then, then's my thoughts. I like the, 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 the notion of integration here because like, I, I do believe that. So the question is how valuable it will be to people, uh, Michael, the data, I mean, uh, having the data that they will uh, get through a service or be able to manage through a service. And have it be integrated with like uh, different providers, like uh, in the commons, ideally, of course. But in general, like in, in economy, like uh, in general example, uh, this idea of cross posting and so on, uh, and finding opportunities. That's very cool. Um, I also thought, uh, Jerry, also of the, of the book aspect. In particular, I think the book uh, aspect is sort of like, you know, with Goodreads being uh, shittified, uh, I think it's the, the current term, uh, by Amazon. Uh, and of course, we have Bookworm and like all these the failures based uh, uh, tools uh, that are uh, up and coming. Uh, for example, like getting a prototype app that just that just uh, posts uh, like book collections from photo to failures from so from photo to like the Goodreads alternatives. That could be a very nice uh, first thing to build here. I think Michael is my. Um, so essentially, like start with books. I will, uh, I will plus one that from Jerry. I think. Um, say, say that again, Flanty. I, I say yes. about books. Yeah, I will. I will start the uh, this 
cataloging and sharing uh, with books, and maybe records, I guess was what, what's mm, going to be. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I oh, hear a thousand a, of those too. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and there, um, yes, I think uh, there is like, you know, just because you will get consumers for the data, consumers also like a term which can be, but just in technical terms, right? Um, like, you know, it will be the first people interested in like knowing about collections. It will be like maybe people in the social network about books that already exist. So uh, the same, I guess, for, for records, I guess it will be like Discogs or I don't know, like what is the current thing. But, you know, this will be like integration with these services will be a good, like a feature for this network, I guess I'm saying. Uh, and the other thing is like, if you want to prototype something for this, uh, I don't know how, uh, what your plans were, but like my, my idea always, I'm always thinking about the Agora in the background, as you may know. Mm -hmm. uh, you could totally imagine like the, a prototype as, a, as an Agora. It could be like, you know, um, I don't know if you have a name for the project, but you know, like a uh, personal like, it's, archive. It, it's called the Artifactory right now. Artifactory. Uh, Artifact, uh, I'll type it in. I like that actually. Artifactory. Um, so you know, like uh, I will, I could easily bring up uh, uh, artifactory uh, point agorai, for example, uh, point agor point agorai, because I have like uh, I can bring up multiple agoras there. But uh, it, it, just as a, if it helps you prototype, and then you could imagine like a user having a Git repository with like descriptions of what they have, and that could be rendered as like a you know as a prototype website if you if that is useful at the D point, just an open offer. Cool. It's interesting how uh, CDDB and IMDB and all those things had a, a fun flash early on, and then a lot of them got just, you know, eaten by larger entities and corrupted or screwed up in different ways. Like, like the commons of information doesn't live very long. It's pretty sad. Um, another thing and on my wish list. A lot, a lot of that has to do with economic model and DC funding and yeah, know, exactly. exit and stuff. So, you know, trying to think of how you make this work economically where it's self-sustaining um, and still, you know, still maintains some kind of integrity for the users. Um, exactly. Um, oh, I was just having a thought, but it's gone. Thanks for the links to Bookworm. I think that's what distracted me. Cool. Are you guys familiar with uh, StoryCore? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a StoryCore piece to this too. You know, it's oh, cool. imagining that like um, there's a, a, a the president of the Tenement Museum in New York is is uh, somebody I've met who had. Um, let's see if I can find a link to this thing. Um, really, uh, Talk amongst yourselves. I'm just looking for a link here. So, in the meantime, how are you, Adam? If uh, you want to share what, uh, what are you working on? Or... Oh, sorry, me? Uh, yeah, yeah. No. yeah. I'm working on, I showed sort of uh, last time we met a demo of like um, essentially a play, a player. A media player um, and website configuration that lets you build static web pages like normal using a static site, but then have them act in a single page application style way where you can navigate through the static pages but retain the player playing um, without interruption through HTMX. Um, oh, HTMX. I, I yeah. wanted to, to give it a try. Yeah, yeah. This is my uh, me trying HTMX. The hey, idea good. being, yeah, the idea being like, if I can figure out how to do this well, then I can have a player and a that can be like and a process that can be applied to a variety of other sites um, easily, hmm. and allow this type of functionality to happen where the player persists as you navigate through the site. Um, hmm. I work with a bunch of like podcast people and. 
my partner, she does podcasts as well. And this is like a huge unsolved problem for them because like to do it normally, you need to have like a big React app. It needs to be set up in an SPA way. And then you need to have like a whole bunch of build process stuff. So it, it ranks on SEO and so forth and so on and so on. But here, like once I get this process working the way I want, you can just have your normal website and then layer HTMX on top of it and layer this custom HTML element of the player on top of it um, and have it work. So mm -hmm. uh, this week, I think I've gotten the player doing everything I want it to do, um, which is like being able to navigate through things and uh, and have the player work like a player. Um, and the, the test project for this is I'm building um, some API queries to pull. If you're familiar with um, this is my jam or from 61 or last mm -hmm. FM obsessions, right? Over a variety of platforms, I've been doing, picking one song every day to week period as like my obsession for that day to week period. Oh, um, and it's been split up amongst all these different platforms. So mm -hmm. uh, a while back, I did the work of moving them all into my Spotify playlists. But of course, that locks it all in Spotify. <sighs> um, so I cr built the process to crawl my Spotify playlists that I use to archive all of these old obsession lists. Nice. Hold them okay. into JSON. Um, and then I'm going to write, let's see, I was, I think I have it here. Write it into um, separate markdown files for each track. And then I'll have them all in this website. Um, and I'm starting with YouTube as like the way that I'm pulling the um, like the way that the player is going to work is you just play YouTube, but mm -hmm. like the player element is a custom HTML element. So it can initiate and manage any number of uh, players, right? As long as there's some way that I can monitor the API and understand when a play has stopped and ended. So the goal is to then also have the player expand, not just to mm -hmm. YouTube, where this is very easy and a lot of people have done it. Uh, not the maintaining the player part, but interacting with the YouTube API. And also have uh, SoundCloud and yeah. um, other and players that. that are out there. Yeah. I like that. I, I've always wanted like playlists as a service mm -hmm. to put it uh, like in the sense of uh, <laughs> in the sense of like uh, fully integrated at a, at, a, at a higher level. So a playlist with YouTube and Spotify uh, tracks. Yes. Exactly. Um, and I'm also pulling the Spotify thing as well. So you can have it on Spotify. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And I'll have the whole bunch of them sort of archived uh, for me, which it's, would be nice. It's very cool. And also, yeah. you know, like once you have cross-platform playlists, uh, you can have services that say like, do you want to, to actually consolidate your playlist on one platform and essentially offer that as a service, which actually uh, so, could solve for many um, uh, new um, uh, providers, it could solve the issue of the empty page of customers to put it some way. You know, I think, you know- Do you want to be... import your existing right. playlist, et cetera? Right. There we into a, a commons first uh, provider. There was a really brilliant thing that Apple did when they first launched. Uh, you know, it wasn't Apple Music back then. It was, you know, iTunes or something. Um, mm -hmm. Where they said, um, if you have LPs or cassettes, um, or, or, you know, just bad, bad recordings of something, any, anything that you can make manifest digitally to us, we will give you back 
a cleaned up version in our right. service, which really just meant that they were just tapping their inventory. They weren't, they weren't really like, I mean, it, it made it sound uh -huh. like they were, they were like, you know, doing, doing something to your recordings, but they weren't. Um, but it, it I, I thought it was just really smart about instantly populating your collection with the stuff that right. you already had a higher quality. Yeah, I think like that's yeah. There's a lot of potential once you get the data out to do interesting things. And the other yeah. reason that I wanted is like there are a bunch of like last FM or there are a bunch of Spotify. There are a bunch of things I could do with Spotify data that Spotify does not natively support. Mm -hmm. That as somebody who makes a lot of playlists, I would like to be able to fiddle with like being able to pull up a track and see which playlists I have it in, mm -hmm. which you think would be like a real obvious feature, but yeah, a this a little Spotify. Little bit. Um, and sort of the incentives for like specifically focusing yeah. on Spotify playlists here is once I get this first version of it done where I'm manually sort of doing these queries, then I can run it across all of my Spotify playlists, pull them all down to a website, 